The hard work is done. Our couch is uh, looking like a couch, at least from the viewpoint, uh, viewport perspective. Um, in this video, we're going to take a step in the direction of rendering um, with materials. So material is actually pretty important for a couch. Um, designers put a lot of effort into choosing the right threads and the, the visual movement and the colors. And if you've ever been to a furniture shop and they hand you a swath of like a hundred different types. It's actually pretty integral to the design um, of the couch. Now from our reference, we don't have a lot of information. It's uh, unfortunately, I, I searched far and wide with Bing and uh, did not find any high resolution uh, images. Evidently the manufacturer wants you to email them to get high res photos, but you have to have like a press use. I don't know if I class as press and I didn't want them to shut the whole tutorial down. So anyways, we just have this and um, we can see it's relatively plain, but something that's quite important to this is it has slubs. So slubs are essentially almost like the, the, the threads have been pulled. It's almost like they're, they're wider in various places. So some columns, some rows are slightly wider than others, which makes them kind of bolder. Um, and they do it in kind of a varying uh, pattern so that it gives it visual movement. Um, and that's important because if it wasn't like that, it would look just like a blank canvas, very plain, very boring. Um, so the texture that you use is very important. Now you can get your textures from anywhere. However, I would highly recommend that you at least make sure that they are not photographed. So we learned this the very hard way um, when we tried making fabric textures for Polygon. We got like a whole photo scanning setup, we got samples sent in and we started photographing them. And then we realized two problems. One, the threads are always blurry because they're so small. Um, and two, the thread rows are so small that there is, it's almost impossible to line up one straight line from one edge to the other, which means that you can never actually make the texture fully seamless. Cause even if you blow the edges or whatever, you're always gonna have this kind of stepping issue um, with, with the threads going across it. And that's a problem on a couch because you have to scale the fabric more than usual because it is so big. So what we did at Polygon, and this is of course gonna sound like an advert for Polygon because it is in a way an advert for Polygon. That Look at the shirt, right? You clued in yet? Why do you think I made this tutorial series? No, I, I, I am really, I've been wanting to make a couch tutorial for a long time, but it just so happens it's also quite, quite uh, uh, appropriate for Polygon. But anyways, so we created um, a library of um, basically designer selected fabric for upholstery for furniture. Um, and they're photorealistic, they're procedural, and most importantly, they are fully tileable from one direction to the other. So if you go to Polygon, go to the fabric section, there is a whole bunch to choose from. We also just updated it with a bunch of leather. If you are making a leather couch, by all means, go ahead. Um, the one that we are gonna be using is this one, Moss Plain Weave, um, which you might think like, huh, bold choice, moss. We're really gonna go for a, a, a mossy swamp color couch. Uh, yes and no. So uh, with each one of these, uh, each, each texture, we give you three variations of the color. So you can see we get that color and then we also get this color. Unfortunately, you can't click it without deselecting. But anyways, this is the one that we're actually gonna use here, which looks pretty similar to this guy right here with uh, kind of the brownie kind of thing, but we'll make uh, some adjustments there. So anyways, uh, you only need the 2K version. Um, this is a premium texture. Uh, you have to be a member of Polygon to download it. However, if you're not a member and you'd like to try it out, I've got a low res version um, in the description for you to download. So we're gonna download this, just hit download on all the maps. Whilst you're doing that, I'd also let you know that if you're ever in the need for something specific, you need a texture for a specific couch that you can't find anywhere online, uh, we have an upholstery fabric generator. So basically this is a file that lets you select the exact specifications for the texture. So in this case, the weave type, uh, you can change and customize your own weave type. You can change the thickness of the horizontal vertical strands. You can add patterns, aging, um, and of course you can choose 
choose the colors. So you just export them as PNGs and load them into Blender like you would uh, for any other texture. Um, this might sound a little bit advanced for you right now, um, but if you ever find yourself working for a client in the future who has very specific texture demands, this will almost certainly solve it for you. So assuming you've downloaded the zip file, just unzip it to a folder and we're actually going to use the Polygon Material Converter add-on, which is free. I'll put a link to that in the description as well. You just go uh, edit preferences and then hit install check that little enable box and you should be good to go. By the way, you don't have to use this add-on if you wanna load in each of the maps separately, but this will just save you time. Then when you go to your material settings down here, you'll see a whole bunch of, oh, no, sorry, you won't see that. Uh, you just have to paste in the, the place that you have saved, uh, sorry, unzipped the zip file. And then if you've got a bunch of other textures in there, then you'll see them all appearing here. So this is the one that we're gonna use, this one that's called Moss. So with my object here selected, I'm just gonna hit load and apply. Now, if you go to material preview right here, we can see that it has already been loaded in. How convenient is that? Um, and if you were to split the view and then uh, shift F3 will take you to the uh, shader settings, shader editor right here. Um, and you can see it, this is what the material converter has done. It's set it up with like a, a quick scaling value here that you can sort of play with. Um, this has got some handy controls if you want to adjust any of the settings, like for example, the roughness of it, it's a little bit too shiny out of the gate. Um, I like to just increase it to about a 0.2. Um, it's already plugged in the, the bump map, displacement map. Uh, we won't actually use the displacement map, so I'll disable that. And it's also included a fabric fall off option because it's detected that it's fabric. Um, now this was actually added because the fabric has to be compatible with other rendering engines. All this does is it creates sheen. Um, but you'll notice that the principal shader actually has a sheen slider here, so we don't actually need this. So if you just hit it, uh, select it and hit, Control X, that'll delete it, but it'll keep the connections that it's already got. Um, I just need to reconnect this roughness one because evidently it hasn't guessed that that was the right place. Um, but there, once it finishes reloading in everything, we can see it, uh, that this is what we have. Now, the sheen value, what is sheen? Sheen is, um, the best way to describe it, it's, it's sheen. <laughs> It's like the little fuzz that you get across, like if we make this completely black, just to highlight it and show, it's basically like it's adding like a Fresnel effect, if you're familiar with what Fresnel is. But it's, yeah, it's like the fuzz effect. Oh, it's also got alpha, so you can actually see through it. So we don't want that either. If you were using it for like a flag, like a waving flag in the breeze, you would wanna have the alpha value there, but obviously in our case, we don't. Anyways, this is completely black now. So if we set the sheen all the way to zero, you can see that we get that. Turn it all the way up to one and you get that. So yeah, it's like fuzz, like fabric, little fuzz, like a little raise bit. That's basically what the sheen value uh, is for. So I'll plug in my base color again. And here is actually where we can tweak um, the color that we actually want for our cage. Couch. I've, done, I've recorded this a few times now and that quite often, disturbingly often, I've said couch instead of couch. Uh, anyway, um, so if you go into this, this node group here, which has everything added in for us, just hit tab and that'll take you in here. It does look complex. Don't worry about it. It's, uh, it's, it's all automated. It's basically plugged in the alpha, the gloss, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the color is the one that we actually want to change because we wanted to change it to a different map that we downloaded. Um, so we're just going to go with this one, variation three. If you know what you're doing, by the way, you can use an ID map to pull different channels and then you could actually change each channel to be a different color. Um, that's kind of more advanced, but it's there if you, uh, if you wanted it. Anyway, we're gonna load in that one, variation three, and it looks like this. Um, and doesn't that look lovely? Um, did, I ch did I mention I was changing the scale? Okay, so the scale is, uh, is also quite important to the realism of the couch. So a really common one I see is a lot of people use the wrong scale. Um, I see a lot of couches that look like that. And actually, Whilst we're at it, we might as well just select all of these other objects one by one. Uh, finally, select that one as the last one, control L and then just click materials. And that will copy the set material to every object. And we can see this is how it looks. So this is okay. The problem is, is that yeah, the scale is way off. Like if you were to run your hands on this, it'd almost be like a wicker, like straw couch almost. It would just be, it'd be nutty. So it's almost like, double what you expect it to be and then double again in, in terms of like the size of it. Um, it's usually always, uh, the, the thread count is a lot smaller than you would actually imagine. 
Um, if you're getting like tiling issues, which you shouldn't have with our textures, but if you were, um, you know, you might want to dial it back a little bit if it was unavoidable. Um, but in our case, uh, it looks okay. So I'm just going to go three, uh, like so. And that is basically it. That's uh, really all there is to it for the texturing shading phase. Um, it's turning up the sheen, 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 and uh, setting the scale to be accurate. And uh, you know, the normal map's being used, uh, the displacement's not being used because it's just basically the same as the normal map in this case. One other thing you might wanna do is change the direction of the fabric. So you can see that this looks a little bit odd, having this um, front bit be a different direction visually than this other stuff. So that's something that a designer would not stand for, like if they were designing the couch. So I, I think it makes sense that we should flip it. So the way I do this is go to the UV image editor tab and then uh, just mouse over that front bit there and then hit L. Uh, so not clicking or anything, just hitting L and mine's done it because I've already done it. But underneath select linked, um, if you want to be able to just select that patch, uh, just check seam. Right, and then it'll enable you to, when the, the part that you select, it'll only select what's inside of that island of the seam. And I only learned this like within the year, basically <laughs> that value. I was like, wow, that's cool. How did I not know that? Anyways, now that I've done that, I can just hit A, R, and then type in 90, and that will have rotated it by 90 degrees. And now you can see that they are pulling in the same direction. Yay, just like 9-11, everyone's pulling together. <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't there. That's what I've heard people say. Everyone was pulling together. Um, who would have thought that at part five in a couch tutorial, we'd be talking about 9-11. But you never know where you go. That's why I'm scared of like restarting my podcast. Who knows what sort of weedy topics I would end up in. Okay, this one has not been properly UV unwrapped. Um, so that's annoying. Uh, I'll just select everything, hit U, and then unwrap. Now these won't be perfectly straight, but that's okay, because fabric's also not perfectly straight. Um, but yeah, it, that's that's totally fine. It's, it's not a big deal. Um, one final thing we will do to end out this video is, uh, it, it looks nice. Uh, let me go to the this view. Yeah, it looks nice. Um, however, there is something that it's missing that could elevate this to something that looks a little more real. And that is that fabric is never perfectly flat and ironed, even in the best hotel. Um, there will always be tiny little creases where, you know, it's been sitting in that position for 10 odd years or not even that long. And it's developed a hard crease, which even when you pull the fabric taut, um, you can still see. Um, and that is something I've realized does actually add a significant amount to, to the overall look. So we're gonna use this texture here, um, which is one on polygon, and it's not included in the low res, you know, uh, thing below it, but um, I'm sure there are some free equivalents out there if you wanted to get it. Otherwise, you could sign up for Polygon and uh, support the channel as well as uh, have everything you need to make nice furniture and beyond. Anyways, I'll show you how we're gonna use it. Essentially, um, it's just add in a single image texture. Thank you, yes, yep, toggle, great. Um, add in a single image texture, locate where it is that you've uh, saved it to, and I've downloaded a bunch of them. Um, which one is it? It's something, creases, wrinkles, there we go. Um, now it turns out really the only one you need is uh, not the normal map, it's the black and white map right here, because that's really easy to combine with other bot maps. Normal maps are tricky, they're finicky to figure out. So we're just gonna use this black and white displacement map, hit open, make sure you set this to non-color data, which you should do anytime you're using a map, not in the base color input. And then we just we just wanna combine this with the normal input there, right? Cause that's, that's where the bumps come in. So the way you do that is very simple. Once my viewport is no longer hijacked. Wow, that, that took a, a long time to refresh. That's frustrating. Um, so we're gonna go vector bump and we're gonna connect this into the height input, the height input right there. Um, and then we'll take the normal, put that into the normal input, and then this to go into the normal input there as well. Now this strength value here is going to obviously determine uh, how strong it should be. And by default, it should be way too strong. I'm almost certain of it. Let's wait, yay, that's not an improvement. That is a regression. Okay, so you, you put it at 0.1 and you can see um, 
the sort of effect you get. Now, um, obviously you can change the scale of it to have different or varying effects. Um, how does that look? That's not too bad. Um, you know, if you went by the same one from here, it would actually line up perfectly with the texture, which isn't actually a good thing because it might look noticeably tiled and that this always matches this part of the fabric, if you know what I mean. Um, so anyways, I think I will just use a uh, scale of two. Yeah, that's, yeah. Mm, how does that look? Is that the scale of that? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just gonna instead just use the normal mapping like this, UV to the vector. Uh -huh. Let's try it again. And I'm gonna set the scale here to two. Uh, what I did just there, by the way, you click and drag down and you can enter in all of the values at the same time. Pro tip, um, pretty handy. All right, and obviously we wanna turn down the strength once we bring it up, but I reckon a scalar two will definitely work well for this. There we go. And then let's just drag this down. Um, so you can see like this is with it turned off and then this is like bringing it in slightly, right? Um, you can definitely see it more in the corners there. Um, it does, it, it adds something. It's like, it's like you wouldn't even be able to, like if you put it on subtle enough, right? Which you should do, don't go overboard with something like this. But if you put it on just subtly enough, your eye won't be able to notice it necessarily, but it, it, it tricks your eye into thinking that what you're looking at looks real, right? It, it's like, it's it's an extra layer of detail that it doesn't expect to see from a CG render. And it, yeah, it, it essentially, it's just this tiny little bits of like ruffle, right? Tiny little bits, um, which, you know, the, the, the base model is the one that's shining. It's the one that's telling all the detail in the story. But this little bit there, it's, it's almost like a trick, like a brain trick. Um, but it, yeah, I, I just find it adds a lot to the, uh, to the overall render. Uh, so there we go. So that's it for this video. Now the next part is also very important and that is going to be adding in physical seams, which is very exciting because uh, um, I, I discovered a method that's, that's uh, really easy to do. So we're gonna do that. So go ahead, click here on that video and I will see you there.